Hi, everyone, and welcome to this session where we're going to be talking about uh, studying philosophy and education in Ireland through UCEAP. And I'm just going to really, really briefly talk about why you would maybe want to go through UCEAP. Um, you, while on UCEAP, you remain enrolled at your UC campus, which means you do not need to take a leave of absence during your study abroad program. And if you are on financial aid, you can take that with you. That goes with you on your program. Additionally, you are guaranteed that all the courses you take abroad will receive direct UC credit. And I'll talk a little bit more about that credit aspect later, but this is the official study abroad program for the entire UC system. Today we're going to be talking about philosophy and education opportunities at four universities in Ireland. We're going to start with the University of Galway. We actually have a faculty member with us today, and she's going to introduce you to a wonderful course that um, she teaches called Philosophy in Irish Schools. This is a unique course with a practical teaching component that could actually be ideal for philosophy majors who are interested in education or education majors who want to get an international perspective on your major. Um, then um, she is also going to talk a little bit more about the other courses that are offered in philosophy and maybe just what it's like to be part of that department. It's a really lovely department at the University of Galway. Um, after that, we'll have some time for Q&A, and then I'll talk more about the education courses that are offered at the University of Galway, which are offered in the Children's Studies Department. We are then going to move to University College Cork, which offers both philosophy and education courses, and then we'll finish in Dublin at University College Dublin and Trinity, both of which, both of which only offer philosophy courses. With that said, let's move on, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Alvitt. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Dr. Lucy Elvis and I work at the University of Galway and I like to tell people that I have what I think is the best job uh, in the world because I run um, a set of projects called the Philosophical Dialogue Project uh, and so that constitutes courses, research and volunteering opportunities both for myself and my students uh, in different public settings because we're firmly of the belief in NUIG that philosophy is for everyone. Uh, and that means that philosophical thinking is a right for children in their education. And thinking philosophically then is a responsibility for us as adults if we want to live really fulfilled lives. And one way that that has manifested is as a programme called Philosophy in Irish Schools that I'm particularly going to talk about today. But it really inflects a lot of the ethos at NUIG or the University of Galway philosophy and the way that we try to look after and reach out to our students. So the course that I want to talk to you about today is called Philosophy in Irish Schools. It's worth 10 ECTS credits, which means that it's like a double course. And this is because you're going to get a theoretical grounding, chance for practical application and then theoretical reflection uh, guided by myself and my co-instructor Dr Orla Richardson. So this course is based in the philosophy for children pedagogy which you may or may not have heard of because it was actually written in the states originally in the 1960s at a time of huge social justice upheaval as a way of helping people become more thoughtfully engaged with the ideas they encounter in society to understand their value system for themselves and ultimately live more fulfilled lives. It was written by a philosopher called Matthew Lippmann, who when he was working at Columbia University noticed that students weren't very um, excited or ready to engage critically with one another, to disagree in a way that was not disagreeable, to be energetic with their curiosity about the world. And his solution was not, as you might find with some of your old crotchety professors, although I'm, I'm sure not really, uh, <laughs> the AP, uh, that they would be dis disappointed or frustrated by your behaviour in the seminar room. His solution was not to criticise his students, but to go back earlier and introduce philosophy in elementary education, in middle school and in high school, so that children would have those capacities and enjoy that curiosity much earlier on. So we work within that framework. We teach you about that theory, about the pedagogy and how it works. We have a training weekend together where we form a community of practice. So we think about what it means to help people think philosophically, to act as what we call a facilitator of that knowledge. 
and then we send you into a, a local school in Galway City. It's always just a short walk from the campus, it takes about five or ten minutes to get there uh, and in that context you work with one or two other students to help that class think carefully through philosophical questions that interest them. So, for example, I was in the school today watching uh, three students uh, from Boston College, from Arizona, uh, and I think from Washington, working with one class, and they asked, do animals deserve the same rights as humans? After they had read a storybook together about some cows that go on strike, much to their farmer's dismay. In the morning, I watched another session where the students looked at a picture a Japanese art print, uh, and they asked whether adventure and exploration meant the same thing. And they talked a lot about the kind of knowledge that you get from adventure and how unexpected it is, and how when you do exploration, maybe you record things, there's usually a knowledge aim in mind, even if you're only exploring all the flavours of ice cream in your local store. So they did a lot of meaningful work together. It was really exciting because they were questions that these children who were nine years old had made for themselves by pulling concepts out of what we would call a stimulus, so something to provoke their curiosity. And it was useful for the students who are a combination of psychology majors, education majors and philosophy majors to see that difficult philosophical ideas can easily be expressed by really young thinkers in ways that are useful, that are salient and that are relevant to our lives today and to their lives as they live together. So that's the kind of thing that we do and you would come and work with us, you have your six week placement in school, you're mentored by me and we talk about those issues that come out in practice and every week after you've had your facilitation in school, so your hour when you're working with the children, we have our class time together where we look at theoretical texts and we see how did the theory work in practice for us this week? How can I develop this future for the future in my identity as an educator, as a scholar, as a researcher? What does it make this mean for the future? And a lot of the students that we've worked with have become teachers. Uh, many of the US students each summer write to me and ask for a, a reference because this is a course where they've really thought about the tie between philosophy education theory and putting it all into practice and at the end of your final assessment you make a lesson plan or session plan that you can use in the future so they really have the tools of putting together a session that's pedagogically consistent and helps to work towards different goals that they can explain and articulate for themselves. Aside from that it's a really nice opportunity I think to get to know one another because you work in a close team with another professional and you get a lot of mentoring from me, it's a chance to make connections that are very meaningful in the place where you're doing your study. So if you want that kind of support um, whilst you're studying abroad, this is definitely a programme that is for you. Uh, and I would be really excited to meet you because it's one of my favourite teaching opportunities. Aside from this programme, I guess I should say a little bit about the faculty in the University of Galway. You can see it in the bottom of the picture there. It's a really small house. What I often say to, to students is when you're looking around the campus, you'll see all the buildings were opposite the psychology department, which is this very big scientific faculty building. And I say, look out for the place that it looks like you might meet your granny for a cup of tea because she lives there. Uh, and that is what our faculty is like. It is small but it's mighty in many ways. We have our, all of our offices are housed there. We have a small seminar room, which we've just converted into a common room. And as you can see in the top picture, we also have a pedagogical space called the Philosophy in the Wild Garden, where my colleague, Dr. Nora Ward, who teaches environmental ethics listed on the slide, um, does a lot of work with students around uh, biodiversity, permaculture, and circular food economy. And it's a real learning by doing space. So we meet every Wednesday, and we do lots of different work and um, refining the garden, looking at books, sometimes eating the produce, which is really nice, uh, and generally having an open and sociable time. What's different, I think, from the other philosophy faculties in Ireland, and I'm not sure they'd mind me saying that, uh, they have a really distinct identity, each of them, a specialty in thinking, and they tend to group their courses around that thinking. So UCD, a very analytic philosophy space. 
NUIG is different. We're a collective that's joined together by our values in teaching, not our research specialty. So for us, our values are small group teaching with close personal contact to our students, which means that we, while we may expect a lot from you, we allow you to expect a lot from us in return in relation to uh, time spent together and meaningful informal connections where we like to get to know you very well. There's also a strong tie between the research that we do and the teaching that we put together. So you'll see on the slide here, um, three, four of these courses are mine. So uh, Topics in Practical Philosophy, uh, which is a course in Aristotle's Ethics, the Philosophy of Art, the Philosophy of Culture in Context, which also has a placement, which I'll speak to in a moment, and then Philosophy in Irish Schools. And that's because as a researcher, I'm interested in applied ideas around the this close tie between aesthetics and ethics, and I've worked as a curator, uh, and I'm also interested in this notion of public thinking or public philosophy. The other courses that you see on the slide there, ones with an applied element like a uh, practical ethics or environmental ethics uh, and bioethics are taught by ethics researchers who have worked in public policy or in field philosophy, and they use the research they do to closely inform their teaching, which means that you're going to get a course on a, a curriculum that is up to date and current and taught by someone who passionately cares uh, about the work that they do. If you're coming to us in the fall semester and you do want to do a placement, but you maybe don't want to do it in an educational context, you're very welcome to join my course, The Philosophy of Culture in Context. This is a course that is about cultural philosophy. Uh, so it's about that transition between big philosophical ideas about culture in the post-enlightenment period, up to philosophies that are much more critical about the growth in mass culture, thinkers from the Frankfurt School and later, who are concerned with the way that capitalism has inflected our cultural realm. As part of that course, you can also do a placement with our partner, the Tolka Festival of Visual Art. The placement is very different, it is shorter. It's 11 hours of your time over a two week period when we don't have a class meeting. And then you reflect on that in relation to the ideas you've studied. Or if you don't want to do that public facing element, then you create a podcast that connects one of these ideas to a current cultural phenomenon. I, I think that's everything that I have to say. I hope that you'll feel uh, excited and inspired to come and join us next year, perhaps. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them in one second, but I'm just gonna have to grab my baby for one minute. So if anybody does have any questions, um, right now you can pop them into the chat. Um, I'll, I'll also be giving out my contact information at the end. So if you, do, if you have come up with questions later, um, you can always reach out later, but just wanted to take a second um, for any questions that come up right now. I'll give us 30 seconds or so. And we can look at the cute baby in the meantime. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you um, joining us and telling us about about your department, about your classes. Um, I I was very fortunate to be able to visit, and I agree that the department is very welcoming, very cozy, and um, I had a lovely cup of tea there. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. And we're going to kind of move on to some of the other departments and um, we'll, we'll let you know if any other questions come up. That's wonderful. If anyone um, would like to email me directly, I'm always available to answer questions about any of the programs or if there's an area of philosophy that I didn't speak about that you see on the slide there, email me and I'll direct you to the right person uh, who's one of my colleagues. Thanks so much. Lauren. Thank you. All right, so if you are an education major and you are possibly interested in the philosophy and Irish schools course, but you're also wondering what other courses you could take at the University of Galway, I'm going to talk a little bit about the other education courses, which are offered in their children's studies department. It's an interdisciplinary degree that's designed to equip students with the theoretical and practical understanding of the lives of children and youth today. It draws on experience from a wide range of areas, including creative arts, literature, law, health, human rights, history, sociology, and psychology. 
The program prepares graduates for working with children in areas such as advocacy, public policy, arts administration, child welfare, children's rights activism, play therapy, children's research, and international development. On this slide here, you're going to see a list, a sample of a list of the courses offered in the Children's Studies degree. This isn't all the courses, it's just a sample. As you can see, there's a lot of unique and interesting topics available. Um, we actually have some students who are in the Children and Health class and they really enjoyed it. They highly recommend it. Um, so um, like I said, there's a lot of really interesting courses available. If you are interested in the University of Galway and you want to see a full list of courses that are available, you, um, you can email me and I'd be happy to share that with you and we can see if we can get um, full course descriptions and syllabi. My email is going to be provided at the end of the presentation. And I'm going to turn it over to Hillary now, who's just going to talk a little bit about life at University of Galway. Um, you're muted. There we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Hilary Noyce. I'm the resident director of our UK and Ireland programmes, and I work very closely with our, our students on the ground um, in Ireland. So just very briefly, I want to let you know a couple of university and city um, accolades, but more importantly, let you know what our current students have found to be the best things about their host universities and the host cities. Um, and I think hearing how much uh, the group are enjoying their time and what they've been up to will give you a brief but a really good sense um, of enthusiasm um, for Ireland as a great place to study. So although Galway is much smaller than the likes of Dublin, uh, the student population is still very sizable at nearly 20,000 and around 4,000 of those students are international students. So there's a great buzz about the time, very diverse, very international feel. Um, and that international perspective, along with the, the quality of teaching, the student satisfaction, etc., has won Galway the title of Sunday Times Irish University of the Year last year. Um, and the city has also been voted as the European Capital of Culture in 2020. And I think if anybody's ever been to Galway, this is, you know, you'd absolutely understand why it's a buzzing, buzzing little place. So both great achievements. Clubs and societies are really a key part of student life in Ireland at all of the Irish institutions. And when we ask our students what they're up to and how integrated they feel, um, their responses very often tend to revolve around um, their participation in one or several of the many clubs and societies that are available. Um, there's everything from the sort of very highly academic chess club, debating society, astronomy society, to some really fun stuff like baking, the DJing society, or more creative arts um, like anime, manga. It's got so many societies, lots to choose from. If you can't find one, you can actually invent your own. Um, lots of sports clubs too, and our students love to have the chance to try out an Irish sport like Gaelic football or hurling. You can join these clubs as complete beginners um, or as experienced players um, and get into a team. And if you do get into a team, you'll find there's lots of travel um, opportunities for you to compete with other students at other Irish universities. One of our current students is in the orchestra where she plays the flute, um, but she's also taken a lead role in the committee there and organizes trips and concerts. And another student is on the mountaineering and hillwalking club in the mountaineering and hillwalking club, I should say. Um, and that's really allowed her to explore um, lots of different parts of Ireland on these Sunday hikes that she goes on. And all of her trips are subsidized as well, which is fantastic. Um, so she in particular finds Galway the ideal place to choose for that balance of busy student life in a smallish city, and then that calm kind of escape to the countryside um, for weekend walks. All of our Galway students comment on that kind of aspect, the liveliness of the city, the, the live music that you find in all the lovely little Irish pubs um, around town. They absolutely love that. And then the ease of heading out um, of the city to national parks or beauty spots like the Cliffs of Moher, Connemara, Donegal. Um, so in a nutshell, our students would say that Galway is a very friendly place, very lively, lots going on, very walkable. 
Um, and it has a really, really strong sense of community, both at the university where they feel really supported and in the town itself. So there you go, a little introduction to student life at Galway. Okay, so we are going to move from Galway over to the University College Cork, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about philosophy and education there. So philosophy at UCC has particular strengths in moral and political philosophy, as well as in philosophy of the mind, body, and action. Um, it, its greatest strength, however, is its commitment to pluralism and interdisciplinarity, which combines these fields with research and teaching in aesthetics, comparative continental European and Asian philosophy, philosophy of science, and philosophy of economics. The department's teaching is built on, on a foundation of internationally recognized scholarly research com conducted by all staff. Uh, in a friendly and supportive environment, you will learn to master complex material and apply it to concrete problems. So again, we have a sample of the courses in the philosophy department on this slide, so you can take a look at those. And then if you want to see a full list, um, I'd be happy to get you um, a link where you can actually, they have a very, very friendly searchable catalog for visiting students. Um, so I'd be happy to get you that. Um, moving on to their education courses, um, their degree is called the Early Years in Childhood Studies, and it takes a, another multidisciplinary approach and offers a fascinating and stimulating course of study. You will develop understanding of childhood, discovering how children develop, learn, and think. You'll, you'll learn the importance of meeting students' needs and how those needs can be met. You'll consider the challenges and opportunities in children's services and look at childhood from different perspectives. A range of local and international perspectives are taken, including children's rights, children's health and well-being, pedagogical and curriculum approaches, diversity and inclusion. Uh, the degree draws on a range of disciplines such as psychology, sociology, social policy, education, and health. What I wanna point out by looking at the list of education courses here is they have, um, this is again, just a sample, there's more, but they do have a really unique um, opportunity to study special needs education and disability, um, designing for students with disabilities, as well as physical education. From a personal anecdote, when I, I studied in, in Scotland, and Scotland and Ireland are two different countries, but um, the UK and Ireland in general do have a really robust take on physical education, which I think sometimes in the United States is, is an afterthought, it's, it's recess, um, but you'll actually find a lot of really great courses um, at Cork that focus on physical education and the importance of physical education and how to develop good, robust physical education programs. So there's a really good opportunity here for if you're interested in either of those aspects, um, either special needs education or um, physical education, and they even have some courses that co that cover both of those topics, um, that I, it's going to be a really unique opportunity to study these courses um, at Cork. So again, a value added experience to your education. And I'm going to turn it back over to Hillary now to talk about life in Cork. Oops, too far. Okay. That's great. Student life at Cork. Um, just to drop in there, first of all, um, Cork is a university that's accomplished a huge amount in terms of sustainability, and it actually ranks within the top 10 in the world on its green values, which I know is, you know, something that's very, very important to, to our students. Huge achievement. It's also previously won the Sunday Times Irish University of the Year, not just once, but five times. Um, although Galway has just pipped it to the post this last year. Um, so what do our students say about Cork? Um, not dissimilar to Galway, actually. They absolutely love the ability to have a busy student life in a small city, very easy access to beaches, countryside, and they frequently take trips to these kinds of sites in County Cork or County Kerry or further afield in Ireland um, with the International Student Society. So all of our Irish partner universities have an international student society and these societies organise weekend excursions at very subsidised rates. Um, so it's really a great way to see Ireland and make some lovely friendships along the way. 
Um, in terms of other clubs and societies on campus, uh, one of our current students is in the Fashion Society and uh, she works on their publication called Still Magazine. She's also very involved in one of the Drama Society's spring productions and she has just recently been involved in Rag Week celebrations, which I don't know if you have something similar um, in the States, but that's Raise and Give Week. Um, so that's when the university organizes lots of events and they take donations and they give that money to charity. So she said this path week has been a lot of fun in Cork for that reason. Um, but she's, she's particularly involved. Um, you can also get involved in lots of other volunteering um, opportunities. And again, the University of Cork website is great for having a look at what the university can help with when it comes to setting up volunteering um, projects in the local communities. So if you're really keen to integrate um, with those communities outside of the university, do take a look at that. You can actually work towards a certificate as well. Um, so our students at Cork would sum it up again as being a very friendly place, um, very walkable, um, although public transport is, is frequent and very easy to navigate. Um, it's lively, again, with its local pub events, its music festivals, it has a traditional jazz festival, an Irish music festival, um, and again, so much to get involved in at the university, and they love those extras on offer, like the weekend trips from the student societies. All right, thank you, Hilary. We now move to Dublin. And so we're gonna start with University College Dublin and they do not offer education uh, courses. So we're just gonna talk about philosophy. Um, the School of Philosophy at UCD is the largest teaching and research center for philosophy in Ireland. As Lucy mentioned, it's got an analytical focus. Their, ex their areas of expertise include contemporary European philosophy, analytic philosophy, history of philosophy, philosophy of law, political philosophy, and cognitive science. Their, their philosophy modules are taught as a combination of lectures, tutorials, and your own independent research, and would be assessed through a combination of short assignments, essays, exams, and discussions. Your lectures will be kind of traditionally what you're used to, anything from 20 to 400 students, and they're taught by a lecture, which will be a traditional lecture format. And then your tutorials will be smaller from anywhere from eight to 20 students with a, a doctoral candidate um, being your tutorial leader. And that's where you're gonna have a lot of your um, discussion and engaging debates taking place. Um, and again, we have uh, a sample list of philosophy courses um, on the slide so you can see what might be available to you. And I'm gonna turn it over to Hillary to talk about life at UCD. Okay. Um, so UCD, um, this is by far the largest university in Ireland and it's definitely the most international with nearly 10,000 international students um, and they make up 25% of the overall student population. So a very, very international place to study for a semester or for a year. Um, it's set in a very upmarket and green part of Dublin. Um, it's very much a self-contained campus and our students that are there at the moment really love it for, for those exact reasons. They say it's in a, a great part of Dublin, easy access to the city centre, the buses come right onto campus, um, very short bus trip into town, but they really love that campus feel. It's a little bit of home from home and you know it's reminiscent of some of the the US style campuses um, and on campus there's certainly that space for for cam and for taking in the lake and the woodland walks that are in the surroundings but then there's also a lot of student events arranged on campus particularly for the international students um, this coming week one student mentioned that she's going to a, a fancy dress evening that is not wearing your best Gucci shoes, that is costume over here, that's how we say costume nights, so she's looking forward to that this week. There's lots of quiz nights, pub quizzes, there's a global hangout room, it's a great campus that's geared up for holding a lot of events um, on site. There's an incredible gym and pool on campus, I'd say it's probably got the best sports facilities of, of all of the, the Irish campuses. Um, so if you like the sound of UC Dublin, definitely go onto their website because they have a virtual um, campus tour 
which you can take a good look around the campus at. Back to you, Lauren. Okay, and this is our last university that we'll be talking about. It is also in Dublin, but in a different part of Dublin, and that is Trinity College Dublin, ranked among the top 100 philosophy, depart philosophy departments in the world. This is a small and student-friendly department, which offers world-class undergraduate and graduate postgraduate programs in philosophy. Although philosophy is a rigorous and challenging discipline in its own right, it also has clear applications to other fields of study and therefore um, philosophy students at Trinity have the option to combine philosophy with other subjects um, depending on their interests. Um, Trinity teaches courses that have both uh, systematic and historical emphases, and there is also a lively student society, the Metaphys, which offers the opportunity of combining social activities with philosophy. And then once again, we have a list of sample or example, a sample list of courses on the slide that you could take at Trinity. And Hillary's going to finish us off here. Okay. Um so certainly the oldest and most traditional of the Irish universities, it does rank very highly internationally and um, academically, and students do enjoy um, those interactions with faculty, that's something that they do comment on. Um, on the social side, again, huge range of clubs and societies like all of these institutions. There's around 50 sports clubs. We've had past students take part um, and get into the first rugby team and the first rowing team. Um, sports here are not professional level as they are um, at some of the US universities. So it is very possible to make it into the teams and to get to travel with those sports teams on a, on a weekly basis. Um, so many societies, uh, Lauren listed um, one of the, the philosophy ones there, that's definitely uh, of big appeal to our students, as is politics and debating societies. Hill Walking Club, also very popular at Trinity College, but they have over 100, so plenty to choose from. Um, like Cork, uh, the current students are also really enjoying the weekend trips organised by the Trinity um, Students International Student Society. Um, and they say those in particular have really made their experience because they're getting to access some pretty remote parts of Ireland, um, only possible for them because the society organises all the transport. Uh, nearby Dublin, you've got um, the stunning Wicklow Mountains, which is really beautiful. That is where P.S. I Love You was filmed. And of course, you can travel by train over to Northern Ireland um, easily and visit um, areas like the Giant's Causeway or some of the, the famous Game of Thrones sites if you're a, if you're a Game of Thrones fan like myself. Um, students at both Trinity uh, and UC Dublin very much comment on how much they love the local markets in Dublin. So there's lots of different types of markets happening each weekend from vintage clothes to farmers markets. Um, and they all say it's very fun to explore all these different neighborhoods that a large city um, can offer. One of our year students said that the lead up to Christmas in particular was just absolutely magical. Um, with the Christmas market, she said there was a real buzz about it, and that's been a really memorable thing for her. Um, so I hope that's given you a little glimpse. Sorry, I feel like I've rattled through. Lauren, it's been quite, quite brief, but it's just to give you a little glimpse into what our current students are doing and how much there really is on offer at all of the, the Irish partner institutions. Um, I do think when you start hearing about all these exciting things that you can plan in, you'll understand that a semester goes very quickly. So, you know, do you think about coming for a year if, you're, if your programme, if your degree programme at all can permit that? It really only is nine months. It's not even a full year. <laughs> yeah. It's a long time to go away, but I would say that so many students come for the fall. It goes in a flash. There's so much they still want to explore. So really worth trying to consider a year if you can. There's so much to do. <laughs> so much. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Hillary. And yeah, we 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 wanted to talk about academics because it is study abroad, but we also wanted to, you know, give you a, an idea that, you know, you will be doing other things. You, you're going to be a student. There's going to be student life. So we're trying to kind of give you a little taste of both, even though we know there's a lot more to explore. I'm going to really quickly talk about credit transfer to UC because this is a ways off, but I kind of want to plant the ideas in your head. 
On UCAP, you are guaranteed to get direct UC credit. So that means all the courses you take abroad are going to be on your transcript. It'll have a title, units, and a grade. It'll be calculated into your GPA. There's no additional work you need to do to get credit. If you are going to try and apply your courses towards either a GE or breath requirement or a major minor requirement, that does take an additional step. For your GE or breath requirements, you have to talk to your college advisor or your school advisor. They have different terms on different campuses, but your college or school advisor and see what the petition process is to get your course to count towards that GE or breadth. Most of you who are watching this are probably going to be looking to get major or minor credit because we've been talking about major coursework. And in that case, you need to talk to your department or academic advisor in your major to see what the petition process is. So you took this course abroad, will this count towards any of my specific major requirements? Typically, they do, they do need to see a syllabus, um, in which case you could show it to them after arrival. A lot of students go through that process after they come back. They've taken courses in their major and they come back and they bring their syllabus to their uh, academic department advisor. I just mentioned this because I want you to keep in mind that when you're studying abroad, keeping in contact with your department advisors is a really big part of the process before, during, and after so that you know what you need to do to apply any of the courses towards specific degree requirements. Next steps, so we've given you a little bit of information. Well, I think we've actually given you a lot of information <laughs> about philosophy and education in Ireland. Um, you can explore our website. So this QR code on the screen, if you wanna snap it, is actually gonna take you to the Ireland landing page. And then you can dig into the programs a little bit more. You can find out a little bit more about housing and cost and eligibility requirements and uh, spend a little bit more time doing research on your own. I also do recommend going to the academic sub page, even though we talked a lot about academics today, you can dig in a little bit more there, get links to the, um, the university, Irish universities course catalogs and things like that. You will also want to visit your campus study abroad office because that's where you're going to find your deadlines for applying and any campus based steps that you need to complete before uh, you apply to UCEAP. And then um, I have my I have my email up here twice. I wanted to make sure you were able to get it. Um, it's L Nessler at the longest email ever, uceap.universityofcalifornia.edu. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please don't hesitate to email me. I'll get in touch with you. Um, one of my specialists will get in touch with you, or or maybe I'll put you in touch with Hillary or Dr. Elvis or whoever was the best person suited to to answer your questions. We'd be very happy to help you out. We do uh, set up one-on-one -on -one appointments if that's something that you're interested in. Additionally, um, if you want to talk to an Irish student, I'd be happy to get you in contact with either a UC student who's in Ireland or an Irish student who has studied abroad before. Um, if you want to get a little bit more student perspective and more student chats, we'd be happy to set that up for you. We're also going to be holding a, an Explore Ireland session um, in a few weeks where we'll have more student generated stories. So keep an eye out for that because um, that'll be another exciting session you can attend. And then finally, once you do pick your program, the Apply Now button is on our website. That's where you'll start an application in our portal. The application deadlines for fall 23 have passed already. So, so it's, it's too late to apply for fall 23, but we're looking ahead to the future, right? So spring 24 application deadlines are going to be from April, kind of starting from April throughout the summer. And your actual specific deadline will depend on what you see campus you're from. And then maybe you're thinking about the future. You might be thinking 24, 25. Um, we're always happy to talk to you about future planning. It's always good to start planning early for your study abroad experience. And then we have just hit the end and I would like to leave a little time for questions. Again, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat and we'd be happy to answer them. Or like I said, you can email us in the future.